want to put in a word for Toastmasters. They're great if you want to, if you're thinking about signing up. Um, they're like a family. They really help you with everything. And I wouldn't be here without them. <laughs> okay, Steve. My story is rooted in a deep connection with the natural world and an elemental need to make things. One of my favorite childhood memories is hiking in the mountains of New England and reaching the top where I could see for miles above the trees. On this hike, we could see all the way to Boston. I moved to Bozeman with my sweetheart in the late 1970s and got a degree in wildlife biology. I worked one summer for the Forest Service mapping grizzly bear habitat before we took a job together in the beautiful West Boulder Valley. Here I spent my winters exploring textile arts. In the late 90s, we finally made the move to the big city, Livingston. <laughs> the wayward flavor of this Yellowstone Gateway community provided the perfect transition from wilderness to town life. We felt immediately at home with a quirky mix of artists, musicians, cowpokes, and fishermen. In 2007, my, t my friend Tina Ortman invited me into her shop to learn upholstery, restoring a chair I'd picked up at a yard sale. This was not that chair, I wish. At first I hesitated, doubting my abilities, but gave in to her relentless encouragement, and from that moment, I was hooked. I like to think of upholstery as a marriage between textiles and wood, a mirror for my own mar marriage to a woodworker, Waste was the reason my honey and I shifted from building new furniture to refurbishing old furniture and teaching others how to repair and reupholster their own chairs. Have you ever noticed that nature doesn't move in straight lines? If you do a web search of life cycles, every image looks like this. Everything in life naturally flows in a circle, as must our economy. A model of our current linear economy looks like this. When you draw this as a straight line on a piece of paper, it's amazing how this conveyor belt model can so easily be bent into a circle to see a picture of what a circular economy should look like. If only it were that easy. In the perfect execution of the circular economy, we have zero waste. To do this, we must begin with the end in mind. So at the end of use, Products are separated and reused to create the same product again, new products, or energy. That's a tall order from our current perspective. Did you know we throw away 11 million tons of furniture each year in the US? There's progress being made, to be sure. For example, a subscription furniture rental service in New York City helps reduce that number. But it's a drop in the bucket when you look at the big picture. Meaningful change begins with the end in mind, and open source, or sharing, is part of that. In 2014, Tesla Motors opened all of their battery technology patents to the public. I like to think they have a global intention, not just to benefit the elite, but the entire planet. The point of open source is to encourage creativity. It begins with people like you and I, on the local level. It's brainstorming, working, working it out as we go. It's putting our ideas out there so others can join in whatever way speaks to them. Modifying ideas and accelerating innovation. Far out conceptions taken from a new angle become real possibilities in a collaborative shared space. I don't know about you, but putting nose and hairs together makes me think of tweezers. Collective workspaces, often referred to as maker spaces, take many different forms. The common thread is that they're all places where people can gather to create and invent in a cooperative atmosphere. They're places of empowerment where we can build our confidence, connect, and inspire each other. Here in Bozeman, we have maker spaces like the bike kitchen, where you can drop off an old bike or acquire a new one, even build it yourself they will show you how. Those who can't afford a new bike can assemble their own 
with the bonus of learning from other people's projects at the same time. My personal mission is upholstered furniture. For me, there's an obvious connection between upholstery, the collective workspace, and our need to reduce the massive waste in our furniture industry. Anyone who wants to have their furniture restored should have that opportunity at their fingertips, don't you think? Here's my vision. Makers sharing and innovating together suggests a new model for how we buy furniture. If you're a maker, you might take your grandpa's chair to a class and learn how to take, do the restoration yourself. But what if you're not a maker? You need a place to take it to have someone else do it. Today, our local upholsterers are the go-to solution for keeping our chairs and sofas out of the landfill. But to reach that goal of zero waste, we need more makers in the mix. Imagine this, an upholstery-focused workspace that gives you four options to choose from when you're ready to restore your chair. Hire a professional upholsterer to do it for you, save money and hire an experienced apprentice to do the work, or save even more by taking a class and doing the upholstery yourself with the option of training as an apprentice and getting paid as you learn. I don't know exactly what this will look like in actual practice, but I've seen the potential firsthand. This is a project my sister and I conceived at NIMBY in Oakland, California. NIMBY is a huge industrial art collective that's known for its amazing Burning Man creations. The point is, no matter where we are, this maker mentality can be applied to any facet of our lives. We can begin locally to move toward that circular economy. So next time you're inspired to restore anything instead of throwing it away, look for help and support at your local makerspace. Thank you. Thank you.